Not long ago, I tied paracord to this kanai and I swung it around and I realized it was the best thing ever. And since then, I've been obsessed with learning all I can on rope dart. Soft weapons are supposedly one of the most difficult weapons to master. That kind of got into my brain that I needed to show that it's not that difficult to master and that no one should say that something's too difficult. I came across a forum that was discouraging a boy to not learn rope dart. The people on that website were saying that it was too dangerous that it's too difficult to even try, that they had to look for a professional to really to even learn. And I thought, oh my god, these are horrible answers. Because number one, you can take precautions to practice safely. And number two, not everyone has the time or the money or the resources available to them nearby to even learn rope dart. Anyhow, I decided I was gonna learn on my own and help anyone else on YouTube that wants to learn. So here are my tips on how to teach yourself rope dart. Tip number one, do not practice with a metal dart, practice with something soft. If you do have a metal dart, then cover it up with a foam sleeve. I have two videos online that show how to make these practice rope darts. The core is made out of like dog ball, dog balls, <laughs> dog rubber toy balls. Is it necessary to have three different weighted darts? It's nice to vary up your practice. Not to mention, it's also recommended to use something light and something heavy. This one is about, I think, six ounces and it helps build speed. And this one I use maybe like once a week. After a few minutes, you could start to feel this burn in your arm. The medium weighted one is the one I use the most often, but I like the light one for any new techniques because it doesn't hurt as much. <laughs> Tip number two, how to reduce rope burn. You could do what Tom Fazio does in which he uses a strip of silk rather than rope, but if you are using rope, I found out that cotton works the best. It actually breaks in after a while, so it does become softer over time. But when you do first use it, it, it can chafe a bit. One way to reduce chafing is to fill a sock or a bag like this with talcum powder or baby powder. What you do is just rub the sock along the rope and what it does is coat it in that baby powder, thus helping reduce friction between your hand and the rope. If you have hands that are soft and fragile like mine, you might still get some chafing. I did get some chafing right here. It became a bubble that like separated from my other skin and what you don't wanna do is practice on it. And just train with your other hand or cover it up with tape or some band-aid. Tip number three, what DVDs to use to help you learn rope dart. Not one of these DVDs covers everything. Every one has something new to bring to the table. The book is very helpful. It's on nine section whip and rope dart. It like fills in all the gaps that these DVDs can have. It talks about history of soft weapons, its structure, its origin, um, methods of movement, how you should practice. Although if you try to learn like rope dart and chain whip just by this book, I mean, I find it would be very difficult because you'd just be following pictures and words. Whereas these are moving pictures. Art of Sash has some basic chain whip and rope dart drills. It doesn't stitch together all those drills into routines, but he does a great job describing how to do the drill, if it's difficult, why you should learn this drill in particular. After watching it, I realized that not only should I learn rope dart, I should actually learn the prerequisite to rope dart, which is chain whip. Section whip is just one hand circular motion, whereas rope dart is two hands and it's circular plus linear motion. If you want to learn rope dart and make it easier on yourself, you might consider chain whip first. All I'm doing now is doing chain whip drills and I'm able to do some rope dart drills just because I have the basics in chain whip. Shai Dabao's nine section DVD. If you like the martial arts aspect of Chain Whip, then you'll really appreciate this DVD because he talks about how you're supposed to store it. He shows ways to tie it around your waist. Um, he shows like he whips this like board with his chain whip. The downside to this DVD is that it's in Mandarin or Cantonese, I don't know. It's all in subtitles and some of them are hard to understand, but I really, I really like him. He's really cool. <laughs> If you want to go into more advanced chain whip, I recommend 9 section whip chain and it features one of the Wushu national teams. It seems like you should have a background in Wushu before you try this, plus she's so quick. I look like an ape compared to her. So fast and she's so flexible, I feel like it's more for when you get a bit more advanced, when you're more comfortable with all the techniques. After I do all chain whip stuff, then I should be ready to do rope dart. Dong Hyun Ko Boss's DVD, he splits up the routines into weeks, like week one, you just do retrieving and shooting, and then two is like foot drills, 
It's been a while since I watched it, but it's in English. <laughs> that's a bonus. It just shows you the routines and the drills. That's that's all it is. Whereas if you look at Shai Debao's Rope Dart, once again, it talks about the practical aspects of the dart. If you want to get feel for what the Rope Dart was originally meant for, then definitely Shai Debao's DVD. Tip number four, use an editing program to split up the DVD that you have into separate drills because usually these videos are just, it's just one long movie. When you're learning something for the first time, you want to watch that technique over and over again. What I did is I took his DVD, I plugged it into my editing program, I split it up into all the separate drills, then I transferred it to my iPod Nano. I go to videos, I go to movies, and I have all the drills listed in order. It's easily accessible because if you're outside practicing then you can just refer to a video so I highly recommend that it does take some time but makes your life way easier tip number five practice in front of a mirror if you ever take in a dance class or a martial arts you'll notice that usually your dojo or your gym is covered in mirrors and it's so you could watch yourself and see what you're doing wrong I spent my first month practicing chain whip or rope dart without a mirror, so I was just learning by feel. And then I'd videotape myself and I'd rewind it and play it and I'd be like, oh whoa, what the hell am I doing? I bought two mirrors at Lowe's for like six bucks each and I hung it up using extreme Velcro and like brick clips and it's just a lifesaver. Now I can actually see what I'm doing, I can make sure my like dart is going straight. Tip number six, set a practice routine. If you're like me, you get distracted easily, so I decided I'm gonna focus on this and do it because I bought all this stuff. My whole goal is to practice six days a week. I practice between 40 minutes to an hour. So I start off each practice doing the drills I already know and to keep it consistent, I'll do 10 reps on each side. Once I'm done brushing up on the basics, I start practicing something new. Like I'll start practicing head turns and all I'll do is head turns for like 10 minutes. After that, I might just spend some time working on transitions like a transition from an elbow turn to a head turn to an inside crescent kick. Um, just getting used to not empty whipping, just consistently moving, keep on moving. Towards the end, I'll switch into rope dart mode. Even though I haven't really focused on any videos of rope dart, I do practice some of the drills because that's my end goal, to get good at rope dart. So if you do that, set a goal and focus on what you can do better the next day, you could easily master something over time. At least that's what I hope. <laughs> Tip number seven, how to get started with chain whip without an actual chain whip. You could go out and buy a chain whip, although some of the reviews are discouraging, but just to get yourself started, you can easily convert this rope dart into chain whip length so you can practice chain whip drills. First, you make a slip knot about a foot and a half from your hitch, and there's your slip knot, and then you pretty much crochet midair. So now this is chain whip length, and by chain whip length, this should go from your shoulder to, I prefer, midway between your knee and ankle. This is actually one of the things they teach you in a couple of DVDs. Impressive way to start a routine if you go from chain whip drills and convert this magically into rope dart, because what happens is that it easily just like slips out. I'm gonna leave you with some footage of me practicing. Don't judge me too harshly, I'm not an expert, but maybe this will inspire you to try out the sport, which is seemingly very difficult, but it's not too bad once you, once you start practicing. So, here we go, yay! I've been tinkering with different materials, different types of knots. So I just wanted to post this video on what I think is the best way to make a rope dart. Ah! <laughs> Baby, I'm gonna kill you! You're such a dick!